the quintessential quintuplets. This is a series I have enjoyed a lot, and it is also a series I have made countless videos on, all of varying lengths and quality. And so given my boundless love for this amazing manga series, when I heard that the author, Negi Haruba, was penning a brand new manga, I just couldn't help but be excited. And now that it's been around 18 months since the series has begun serialization, and the honeymoon phase has worn off, I thought I'd talk about Neki Haruba's new series. The series in question being Ranger Reject, a series about villainous invaders versus the heroic dragon keepers. And if you think that short summary sounds rather simple, perhaps even generic, boy are you in for a surprise. So without further ado, and with this tiny little spoiler warning, let's talk about Neki Haruba's new manga, Ranger Reject, and my overall thoughts on it. The first thing I have to talk about when speaking on Ranger Reject are the characters, their varying levels of morality, and why I believe it works rather well. At first glance, when you look at the series, you may assume that it is the average Power Rangers manga, which has very black and white levels of morality, and perhaps might brush it off as just being nothing special. However, upon reading this, you'll quickly see that it is far more complex and interesting than just black and white morality. For example, the Dragon Keepers, the quote unquote Power Rangers of the series, appear to be plain evil and just enjoy having a grip on the world due to their battles with the invaders, and the invaders are painted to be sympathetic characters who are just being abused by the Dragon Keepers. But if this was all the series was, stereotypical good guys and bad guys having their roles switched around, I would probably find this boring because that's still black and white morality and not too interesting. But that isn't the case at all. Every character in this series has their own goals, purpose, life, and their own varied levels of morality, and it's all very interesting to read. For example, initially you may think that the Dragon Keepers are just plain villains who masquerade as heroes, but as you continue throughout the series, you can see that that's not really the case. Or perhaps you may just think that the invaders are sympathetic characters who you can side with, only to see that for the most part, they aren't really good people and are still pretty evil. But what I really love is how both sides of the central conflict, the sides on the rangers and the sides of the invaders, have plenty of characters with different levels of morality and different goals and things they wish to achieve. For example, Red Keeper appears to be blown evil and is the leader of the Dragon Keepers. But then someone like Blue Keeper is portrayed as an honest to god good person, although a little rough around the edges, yet they're on the same team working towards the same goal. Or perhaps you can look at the invaders with D and Double X, where D wishes to take over the world, sure, but finds a degree of friendship with humans and is certainly a good person overall, as seen with this scene. Whereas Double X just wishes to wipe all the humans out because that is their programming and they don't know any better. It's really interesting. Really, when reading this manga, I'm always impressed with how often I get invested in these characters and their relationships with one another, considering their varying levels of morality. It's always so interesting seeing people who are fundamentally different working towards the same goal, sometimes through very different means, an example being with Sakurama in D. Overall though, the characters in this manga and their moral ambiguity along with their relationships with one another is a highlight and something I believe is done very very well. You just never know what's going to come out, how these character dynamics are going to work out, and I think it is a very interesting point for this manga and just a really big positive overall. But moving away from the characters in this manga and why I enjoy them, let's speak on something I always talk about whenever I make videos on manga, the art. Now I'll just come out and say it, but the art in this manga is great. Negi Haruba really brings his A-game when drawn in this manga, and he has, my opinion, vastly improved from his art in the already beautiful quintessential quintuplets. The art has great expressions for the characters, phenomenal action sequences, and great background designs, unlike a manga such as Rent a Girlfriend or The Sinjuchi Family. Don't get me wrong though, Rent a Girlfriend is still peak fiction, let's not get that twisted. But to cut this section short though, because I know how often I talk about art in the manga whenever I make videos, the art in this manga is great. And while not on the level of Girls as Tour, Dragon Ball, or Yuta Camp, it's still absolutely phenomenal and definitely a positive for this manga. Another great thing about this manga is the action. Now, I sort of brought this up when speaking on the art just previously, but the action in this manga, I believe, is exceedingly well done. I believe the fights are well choreographed, the movement is fluid, and the paneling is well done. With the action being the main focus here in the manga, it makes me very happy to know that it is just pretty good and definitely positive for this manga. Another great thing I believe Ranger Reject does fairly well is making the world feel alive. Now what I mean by this is that there are always a million pieces moving in the story, with everyone having their own motives and goals to accomplish. I believe this is a really big positive for the series, as it allows the reader to feel as if the story is always building towards something with so many moving parts. This series is sort of like the anime Code Geass in this aspect, where there are so many moving pieces in the story and you're always going to find yourself invested in what they're all building towards. And while one could say that having a lot of moving pieces in a story doesn't really matter to the quality of the series, I would personally disagree very heavily. Take Mortal Kombat 11 for example, where it is literally just one faction versus another faction with little to no room for anything to go on in the background. 
With stories like the Mortal Kombat 11, it is painfully noticeable to see how bored you can get when it's literally just one versus another group. And it's just not the greatest. Although I still love Mortal Kombat 11 immensely, don't get me wrong, it's just, it is a large criticism I have with the game. Unlike Mortal Kombat 11, however, Ranger Rejic always has so much going on that it is almost impossible to get bored with this series, and I find that to be a huge positive. And the final thing I believe Ranger Rejic does exceptionally well as a manga is that I believe it just has a pretty good sense of humor. Now, of course, humor is subjective, but I just believe the humor in this series is consistently funny and enjoyable, and I just, it gets a talk out of me. What can I say? It's funny. Now, are there any negatives to this manga? Well, I can think of one, and it's that it has the stupidest f***ing localization name ever. Ranger Rejic is an awesome name for a title. The Ranger is there for the fact that there are power rangers in the world, and the Rejic is there in the title for representing the main characters in their rejection of the societal norms of the world they inhabit. That title is awesome! Not only does it roll off the tongue, it also represents the series in a core theme of this series, and I think it's very, very well done. But apparently, the English name of this manga is Go Go Loser Ranger. That sucks I don't care that it is a reference to a 20 year old TV show. It is a garbage name, and whoever approved of that name should be executed. I don't care. It's terrible. But all jokes aside, because honestly the name of the series doesn't really matter, after having penned what I consider to be the masterful series, The Quince of Twin Tablets, is Negi Haruba's newest manga a worthy successor? Well, in my personal opinion, which is correct, yes it is! From the great characters, to the action, to the comedy, to the very alive world, I believe that Ranger Reject is a great manga. Is it as good as The Quince of Twin Tablets? Well, only time will tell, but from the looks of things here, it is definitely a great manga, and I cannot wait to see where Negi takes this series next. And anyway, that's the video. I've been wanting to make a video on this series for a few months at this point, but I kept on waiting just in case I was being biased because it is still a new series. Thankfully, however, time did this series pretty well, and it's, you know, it's better than ever. I, I really like it. <laughs> uh, I also really liked making this video, and hopefully it comes out sometime in September. I don't know, I'm bored. At the time of recording this, um, Kachima Kanjo just got its season 2 announced, so I'm kind of mad about that, because that series sucks. I should, really make a I should really make a video about why that series really went downhill for me, because it is garbage. <laughs> what, what, I don't know, man. I don't know. Whatever. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Read Ranger Reject, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.